Hey everybody, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. A shout out to drone enthusiasts everywhere, and of course, a shout out to all my friends at the Drone Seekers. Hey, I got something going on today with the uh, with the good old Hubson Zeno. Uh, it's a warm day today. Uh, it's about 90 degrees, uh, and it occurred to me that this might be my last opportunity this year to try this test. Uh, when the Xeno first came out, there were uh, there was a lot of chatter in the forums, etc., uh, about the fact that this little quad did not have adequate cooling and that it would overheat and fall from the sky once we got into warm weather. Now I don't know of any instances of that happening. There, there may be, but I just don't know about them. Uh, but what I thought I would do today is I've got two batteries with me, so I thought I'd do a little test. Uh, I'm out at Heroes Park in Meridian where I got a lot of room to fly this thing around and I can fly across the road into some of the open fields. I'm going to uh, take this thing out and I'm going to fly it at, uh, at full throttle, full tilt. We're going to keep it at full tilt the whole time we're up in the air. And we're just going to see if it gets, how hot it gets and if we have any issues with it. Uh, now I'm not going to go clear out to range. We might go out, you know, seven or eight hundred meters and then turn around and come back. But always I want to keep it at full throttle, full tilt. Maximum taxing of the motors and everything in here. So uh, then when we get it back, when the battery gets low, uh, just for the fun of it, we'll try a precision landing and see if that works as long as we're doing it. And then I've got a second battery, so we'll hot swap that battery in and uh, we'll do it like Al Duran uh, taught us how to do it, where you just shut down the drone, slip in another battery, fire it back up, it reconnects and off you go again. And we'll go out and we'll try it one more time uh, and we'll just go full throttle for that battery too. The other thing that we might be able to look at is uh, I'll turn on uh, video so that will kind of time us and see how much time we have in the air of course when we do the precision landing we'll have to shut video off so there might be you know we might have to add a few seconds for that but uh, in any case uh, let's throw it up in the air and let's just uh, let's just see what happens I, I have a lot of confidence in this drone I'm sure it's going to be just fine but uh, you know this would just be fun just an exercise to uh, to see how it goes give me a second to get it up in the air here Okay, so uh, looks like we're ready to go and we're doing a screen recording. Uh, let me uh, switch to video mode here. Uh, I'm firing up uh, video. Uh, well, let's check our video settings real quick here. White balance is on sunny day. Perfect. Okay, so let's start recording. I forgot I have to bind. Okay, we started recording and uh, we are just going to uh, go ahead and take off here. Okay, so there you go. You got a good look at the video. Let's, uh, I'm not going to mess around. We are going to go straight up and take off. We'll fly out to the corner of the park. We'll do a uh, quick uh, return to home to make sure that it knows where its home point is just as a test. Hitting return to home now. So the drone's turning around and coming back. Drop the camera here so you can kind of see where we're at. I am uh, staying under the shade here. So it's pretty clear the drone knows where we're at, so I'm going to cancel uh, return to home. So it stopped. Let's pick the camera back up here. 
And we'll spin it around. Let's go across into uh, the field here towards Walmart, right across the basketball courts. So we're at full throttle right now. Got the drone at full throttle. Now where I'm standing, I think kind of blocks my transmission signal because of, uh, you know, there's a metal roof on this, uh, on this picnic shelter, so. I don't, you know, I may not get the range I otherwise would. We're out a couple hundred meters. Three hundred meters, and we are full stick forward. About eight meters a second, which is about I don't know, eighteen or nineteen miles an hour, something like that. Which that's pretty much top speed for this guy. That's that big old Walmart Super Center that we've seen many times. We'll get out about uh, six, maybe seven hundred meters, and then we'll uh, we'll turn around. God, got good connection. So I, I was a little worried about this roof, but no problems. So, okay, so we're going to turn around here. We're not going to go over the top of any of that stuff. Again, I've got the drone at full throttle. We're going to go uh, over the top of this construction site that you see here. Boy, they're building a lot of new homes around here, I'll tell you. And we're right behind, right directly behind the uh, LDS church there on 10 Mile. Again, about 8 meters per second, and I am. Uh, Doing my best to keep the uh, remote controller pointed at the drone. Seven point eight meters per second. Raising a little altitude. Let's get up about 60 meters or so. Seventy-three percent battery, so it's doing pretty good. We've been in the air four and a half minutes. Uh, a little bit quicker now. We're going to get out uh, over the top of this particular field and then we're going to do, take a left. That is Chinden Boulevard you see off in the uh, distance there. And we're going to kind of go out towards the corner of this field, uh, which, you know, I'm looking at this, we're already at 750 meters, so I'm not going to go much further. About, about 900 meters off and 900 to uh, kilometers when I lose signal so I don't want to do that I'm gonna turn it around and we are gonna bring it back towards us so what we'll do is uh, you guys have all seen this view before we will uh, fly over the corner here, just right kind of between the uh, church there and the housing development back into the park. So that's Heroes Park where I'm at. 62% battery still. All right, I keep forgetting I'm not pointing the, uh, the remote at the drone. Let me go more this direction so I can avoid uh, going over the top of those houses, just kind of over the empty church parking lot here. And then those are some maintenance buildings right by the side of the street there. So now we'll take a little bit left, go back over the park. A 
50% battery, it's really starting to drop and we're at about six and a half minutes or well, excuse me, almost seven minutes of flight time. And so what I've found is if I get to 13 minutes on this thing, I, I, I'm doing pretty good. When, I, and I want to qualify that by saying when I'm flying it like this uh, at full throttle, so we're at 50% battery. I can hear the drone above us. So we'll go out here to the corner of the park and we'll turn around when we get there. I'll drop the camera a little bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna go over that play area there. Let's let's turn it around. So let's head over to the opposite corner of the park. And we'll turn again. 48% battery. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go back over that, across that field, uh, across the street. About an eight minutes flight time here. Really no glitches with the drone at all. It's flying perfectly. That pond that you see down there is kind of interesting. So what the park system does is they stock those ponds with uh, fish. And uh, you know, if you're a neighborhood kid here, you can, you can go fishing in the pond. Uh, you know, I know some of you are going to ask me what kind of fish, and I don't know. I probably should know that, but I don't. Uh, but it's kind of, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'll see adults fishing out there sometimes, and I'll go, God, leave those fish for the kids, you know? But, I mean, it's there for the public, so. How far out there? We're at about 350 meters, 45% battery. A little over nine minutes flight time. Or, yeah, flight time, because we started the recording, so right as we took off. So that's fair. Really solid connection, really no FPV glitches or anything. So, I look down there to the left, you can see a couple of trucks that are... Uh, no doubt Walmart uh, yeah, aircraft disconnected. So I, I've got this metal roof between me and the drone. There, I got it back again. And it's telling me the battery's only at 40%. Yeah, that, that is my fault because I, uh, like I said, I've got this metal roof between the signal and the, and the drone. But we got her back here real quick. It didn't, we got the connection back really quickly so gosh I need to pick the camera back up there one of the things that's nice about this little Xeno it has a nice stable horizon I really like that not to mention the quality of the video off of this little guy you know for a I've seen this drone uh, as cheap as two hundred and twenty dollars and recently uh, I think I saw it an ad the other day for $230. Man, it, this thing is just a, for the price, it's just so hard to beat. Really looking forward to the Xeno Pro when it comes out. So my understanding with the Xeno Pro is we'll get a little better controller, although I don't know, I'm kind of used to this thing now. I, and, and since they gave us the, where, we, uh, the, where we could change the speed of yaw, etc., I'm really fine with it. Uh, but the, uh, you know, they, they say it'll have a four kilometer range, which is honestly more than I would need, which will be interesting. We'll want to test that out. Then the other thing is uh, they are advertising a different uh, Amberella chip in the camera, a 12S chip. 
and I wish I'd have saved them, but I didn't. But there was a gentleman on one of the chats we were on one day that posted all the specs for that particular chip. And it was, uh, uh, it, it definitely had better specs than the, just the, the, the Amberella 12 chip that's in this drone. So, you know, what that'll do to video, I have no idea. But hopefully, it'll improve it. And I've heard the camera, just, I'm not a technical guy, but I've heard the camera in this drone described as what you would find in a moderately priced uh, or even lower end cell phone, uh, which is pretty darn good. Yeah, it's given us a warning, a battery level warning of 30%. We've been in the air for 12 minutes. I'm going to turn around here. I don't want to go over the top of that playground. And I had a little bit of a freeze in FPV there because I was pointed. I was not pointed towards the drone. So again, we're still at full throttle, a little over 13 minutes. And I'm just going to keep it within the confines of the park here for a while. Let's lower the camera a little so we can get a better idea of where we're at. There's that yaw. Going towards the corner there. And we'll turn again. That building that with the red lid right there, that's where all those lawnmowers hide that uh, are out here mowing the lawn when I'm filming videos. <laughs> yeah, forced to return. So at 25% it went into return mode. We're at almost 14 minutes. So, you know, that's a little different than, I'm trying to remember what their advertised flight time was, 21 minutes or something. Uh, I, I've never got that much, and you might if you flew it down to zero, I suppose. So I am going to uh, point the camera straight down, and I'm going to turn off uh, video here, so we'll lose that. So, uh, yeah, about as soon as we, as it starts descending here, I'm going to turn off video, and we'll see uh, if it if we hit uh, if we can do a precision landing. So I turn video off. So that's what you have to do with this drone. It uses the uh, the drone camera itself for precision landing. And I'm not even seeing any kind of a display here, whether it's telling me it's... Uh... Yeah, it says it's searching. Well, you know, it's slow and right down, but it clearly hasn't found it. Okay, it's not going to find it. I'm going to cancel because uh, what I didn't want to do, I don't want to mow the grass. So, so let's uh, let's bring it in here. I'm going to I'm going to bring it right in here on the pavement. Yeah, it wants to land. Yeah, that was a little bit of a clumsy landing. It uh, it was coming down on its own. So, but we did okay. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, not shut off the controller. I'm just going to turn off the drone, hot swap another battery in, and we're going to take off again. Okay, the drone is firing up. Let's see how long it takes to connect. I've got it back out there in the landing pedig. You saw that. Still disconnected here. Weak GPS signal, it says. I don't know if I need to bind them again. Not ready to fly, it's telling me. Yeah, it wants me to bind. Okie dokie, we're gonna start recording now and we're gonna take off. So there we go. Well, let's not mess around. Let's we dropped a little altitude there. We had a breeze coming up. Let's go out of ways.
then again, we'll test that return to home, make sure it knows where its home point is. Yeah, and it's coming back to us. Okay, it knows where we're at. I'm going to cancel that. Pick that camera back up. And off we go. Full throttle. Well, I saw, I saw the, I see the battery percentage is dropping pretty quickly here. So this is the original battery uh, that I had with this drone so uh, I don't know yeah I don't know if I didn't you know 75 percent we've only got a minute on here so you know I, I wonder if the battery is degraded some yeah because it's definitely dropping faster than that last battery did well that bird you see that bird he's not liking us let's gain some altitude here I don't know what kind of bird that was, but he was sure giving us the what for. Heading back out towards the corner of the field, Chinden Boulevard there. We'll go out there a ways. Sixty-eight percent and almost three minutes on the battery. As soon as we get to eight hundred meters, I'm going to turn it around. Okay, let's turn it around here. Well, I always forget to point the controller towards the drone. I'm wanting to talk to the camera, and I, I forget to, uh, you know, make sure that I'm pointing the controller at the drone. A little bit of FPV breakup here. Yeah, it says aircraft disconnected, so I'm sure we'll gain it back here in a second. Yeah, it's in return mode. Yeah, there we're moving again. GPS hold. Ah, disconnected again. Come on, baby. I've noticed that lately, that this thing, uh, it definitely, uh, there we got con full control again. It, it, when you, when you get out of range, I think since that last update, it, it, it's kind of, you know, you'll drop contact and then you'll get it back. Whereas before, when you dropped contact, it would drop. And then when you got it back, you, you had it. So I don't know what changed there, but. Wow, we're down to 50% battery. We've only got four minutes of flight time. So I wonder if I didn't have the thing fully charged, although you saw it said 100% when we started out. There again, this is my original battery uh, that I purchased with the drone, so. Yeah, 45%, holy guacamole. But really no issues with the drone. I mean, we're, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's giving us that 40% level. So I'm going to turn it back and bring it around towards the park here. That's the big Walmart Super Center. And that is uh, 10 Mile Road that you're looking at there. And we'll come right back across that fish pond again and we're heading right back into the park. at about seven meters per second.
almost almost eight meters per second. So at this level of battery, I'm gonna fly right over the top of this here. I'm gonna keep it right within the confines of the park here. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. The drone just came right over the top of us. In fact, we'll drop the camera here just a little. We'll just kind of do a rectangle around the park here. And there again, we're at full throttle. pointed away from the drone. I, gosh darn it guys, I that is a problem I have when I'm flying. I always forget to point the controller, especially that's particularly important with Wi-Fi drones. You gotta keep the controller pointed at the drone. I'll get focused on what I'm doing on FPV and I will often forget that I've got to keep that controller pointed at the drone. That's the little, the fanciest piece of ground keeping in this park right there, that little flower bed or shrubbery bed or whatever you call it. Yeah, let's go over the parking lot. My red Durango down there. Telling us the battery level's at 30%. There again, I'm not pointed at the drone. I also have the roof in my way yeah aircraft disconnected yeah it was up above me the drone was up above me and i was not pointed at the drone with the controller so we're down to 29 percent typically when it gets to about 25 percent it will go automatically into return to home I, there again, we are still at full throttle. We've got eight minutes flight time so far on this battery, or since we started recording, so essentially that's it. Back in the opposite corner there. So no doubt when we edit this video, I'll edit out a lot of this uh, footage where we're just flying around, but kind of show uh, what we've done. And, you know, as you guys have seen, yeah, aircraft is forcing itself into return to home at 25%. Uh, so, yeah, so we had nine minutes out of that one. And I think we had 14 minutes out of the other. So that could, I don't know if that's the battery or, or what that is. I, I assume... That's a newer battery that I had in it uh, earlier, so we'll try. We'll we'll see if it'll uh, if it'll do a precision landing again here. Uh, as soon as uh, it starts descending here, I'll shut off video, and we'll see if it uh, we'll see if it finds the apron. Let's let it get down here a ways. Okay, there we go. Shut off the video. And I know other people run their batteries down lower than that. I've been told, I'm no expert, but I've been told it's uh, not good for the battery. Looks like we're pretty close here. Let's see how we do. I'm gonna get out of the way of the camera. Yeah, look, we got the target up on the screen. Oh, there it disappeared. Oh, there it is. Look, it was right on the, it found it there for a second. It's looking. Oh, it's moving over towards it. Boy, wouldn't that be cool if we got it. It's weird how it uh, it has it and then it loses it. Yeah, it's it's not going to do it. I let it mow the grass there. 
Hey guys, so uh, yeah, we took this little guy, the Hubson Zeno, up today. Uh, I think we got about 14 or 15 minutes on the first battery, and then about probably 10 minutes on the second battery, which is the original battery that I bought with the drone. I can tell you that uh, after doing that, we flew at full throttle the whole time. I mean, it, the drone isn't even hot, and it's a 90 degree day today. I mean, it's I, I feel no heat coming off the drone at all nor even the motors which is kind of surprising because typically almost after any flight you touch the motors and they're really they're warm to the touch but they don't seem to be at all so so i guess what we can say is this drone has pretty good thermal characteristics evidently it gets rid of the heat pretty good uh you know uh, the only uh, issues we had was me flying it out of range or occasionally uh not having the uh, remote pointed towards the drone and having a little bit of uh FPV glitch, but nothing to do with heat. So uh, what I am going to uh, say, and this is just anecdotal, this is just my experience with the drone. I'm not a technical guy. I can't tell you. You could open this thing up and I wouldn't be able to tell you one circuit board from the other. Don't know. But what I can tell you is how it operates when I fly it. And uh, that is that it it flew well. The camera worked well. Uh, Everything worked, in my mind, as it should. Uh, it did not seem to get hot. Uh, as you witnessed, it certainly didn't fall from the sky. So yeah, it was a successful flight. We did, you know, uh, precision landing was a, was a bust, but I don't know that we've ever got a, uh, maybe one time I think I got precision landing to work it, but it's just kind of fun to mess around with. Uh, I mean, it's not something that I'm worried about because honestly, uh, even with just GPS, it gets pretty close to the landing zone anyway, and, and most of the time you're gonna you're gonna manually land it. So uh, anyway, uh, that uh, that's kind of the basically the size of it. There, I was a little disappointed in the uh, flight time of that second battery. I burned through that second battery pretty quick. Uh, like I said, that's an older battery, so I don't know. If that has something to do with it or not, it, it said, you saw when I plugged it in, it said it was a, at 100% charge, so honestly, I don't really know. So the first battery, like I said, we got about, I don't know, 14 or 15 minutes out of it, so I think that's pretty good. It certainly isn't the 21 minutes that they that they advertise, although I also brought it in at 25% uh, battery, or it goes into automatic return to home at 25%, and I didn't push it beyond that. So. You know, I suppose if you overrode it, you could you could probably get you know a few more minutes of flight time out of it. But uh, but I chose not to do that. Uh, anyway, really a great little drone. You know, for the money, I just think it's hard to beat this thing. I know the the Zeno Pro is on its way, but you know if you're in the market for for a nice flying little camera drone and and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money, I just don't know how you can go wrong with this guy. Uh, so that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. But most of all, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And we will see you on the next one. Hubson Zeno, one of my favorite drones. Of course, they're all my favorite, right? See ya. <laughs>